Yes. Yep. I see the Retirement and Disability Research Center screen. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's see here. There's probably, um, I assume, <clears throat> well, it's interesting because this is, this is a subsite here. So let's see, how can we set this up to go to that? What, nothing's at the RDRC page just alone like that. Let's, let's edit the page that, that you're on there. Um, if, if you're logged in on that, that page there, can we edit that? I'm, I'm not, no, but I am here. Okay, yeah, let's click edit here. And let's take a look at what the alias is for this page. This is the home page, right? Yep. Yeah, it's still a little sluggish. Um, so then on the right-hand side, Debbie, there's a URL path settings. Can you click into that? Okay. So generate automatic URL alias. Okay, so um, so I think I know what's happening here. So basically, we had created um, these path patterns using that path auto module that we installed. And basically, every time you create an RDRC page, it wants to put it in RDRC, and then it gives you the title of the page that you created. And this page had a title of home, so it gave us RDRC forward slash home. Uh, I think we can just set this up to be RDRC since we don't actually have a page at that, um, that exact location. So if you actually uncheck the generate automatic URL alias over there, you should be able to edit that. And then we can actually just delete everything that says home and the forward slash there, and we'll just leave it at RDRC if that's where you want it to appear. And if you save that, yep. If, and you might have to update some, if you've linked to the home in other places, you might have to update it, but now that should be able to live at just Drupal RDRC. Yeah, and then open up another window and try, try to go to that new page and see what happens there. Oops. Is it, is it project or projects? Oh, okay. Um, can't reach that page. That's interesting. So project NBER or Drupal RDRC. And can you go to any of the other pages here? Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, can you go to any of the other pages at the project, um, the mber.org site? If you notice at the top, mm -hmm. it's the wrong, uh, it's, it's the wrong, it's the science of science funding issue. Oh. Okay, so there might be some block things going on there as well. Um, we can change that. So that would be in our block settings again. Um, So we have the right page content though, right? The right MBR, Retirement and Disability Research page. We just have the wrong uh, heading there, it looks like. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's our block settings. It's I think it's similar to what we did with some of the... It's all wrong, too. That's wrong, too? Yep. That's the, that's the science, science funding issue. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have to change the many settings for each of those. Now, if you go to a, a sub-page for RDRC, can you can you try to go to one of those? Yeah, like, like, um, yeah. 
Okay, and now the menu's right, and the title's right. Okay. So, yeah, so let's... Yeah, you can go... If you click home, it'll probably take us to the wrong... So okay, so we have to we have to update all those links to go to just RDRC and not the not the home link. Um, now, now it just is right, but it's just the page can't be found. Yeah, so do you see how the the URL pattern in the the menu up there says RDRC forward slash home? We're gonna have to change all those links in that main menu to go to just RDRC without the home. So we can edit those links right now if you want to do that. Depends on what you want to do first. Um, if you want to edit these links, just uh, hover over the, the main menu there and, and you'll get that little contextual pencil thing. Yep, click edit there, edit menu. And um, once that loads. Um, so one thing I might do, real just real quick, do you see up in the URL bar where it has that, it has a little query string, it says question mark destination. Remove the everything, with including the question mark and after that, and then just, just delete that. It's like backspace, yep. And then press enter again in there. So you're going to reload. The... What that destination does is it tries to, as you start saving things, it tries to send you back to the page that you're coming from. And I don't want to. I don't want us to keep coming off this page. I just want to stay on this page for a minute. So, um, okay. So, so we can start editing some of these links. So like if you edit background, for instance, or, or home, any of them. Um, so instead of RDRC forward slash home, just do RDRC. No backslash? Yeah, no backslash there. And then save that. And then do the same for like background and research projects. And, well, actually, so background is going to be, yeah, so that's fine actually. All those are, those are actually fine. So, um, yeah, basically... No, you actually want to leave that. We don't want to. We don't want to update those because those actually do live at that page. We only want to change that home link. Actually, now that I'm thinking of it. Um, so I think yeah. So now if you were to go back to the page that you were on previously, if you hit the, um, I don't know if you have it open somewhere. If you want to go back to it, but if you go back to like the background page, for instance, you can. So Drupal. Uh, so if you do admin mber Drupal forward slash rdrc forward slash background. I think you need RDRC before that. I do. Sorry. That's okay. RDRC background, then enter. So this will give you the correct uh, menu and the correct um, title. So if you click home now, it, it will give, it will send us that page um, with the wrong uh, title and the wrong menu, but the page will be correct. So we just have to update the block settings for the main menu and the in the title there, and then I think we'll be good to go. So let's go to our block layout. So structure, block layout, and then, yep, RDRC, exactly. And then in our header there, so we have, um, okay, we have a couple things here. So we have, um, actually in the primary menu, we have RDRC nav. Can we, so if you go down a little bit, Debbie, yeah, you see where it says primary menu? Up a little bit, yeah. Uh, RDRC nav, and if you go to the right of that one and click configure, just curious what the settings on this are. Uh, okay, so we're not restricting it anywhere here. Interesting, interesting. Um, oh, I wonder if. Um, Actually, if we look at, do you know what I think we have to do? I think we have to look at the settings for our actual um, theme switching um, that we were doing. So I think our, our theme switching, switching is probably looking for that RDRC forward slash. So let's, let's go into configuration, yeah. So I think that's what's happening, actually. So do you remember we installed that theme switching module? And we said on certain certain patterns, assign this theme and do this kind of stuff. So, so these blocks and their placement is assigned to this theme that is the sub theme called RDRC, and we're only applying that sub theme on certain URL patterns. And because I think that URL pattern is probably looking for that forward slash, it's not going to appear on the home page, which is just RDRC. So, we'll have to um, once this page loads, we'll have to go take a look at that. So if you look for the theme switcher, I think was it, yeah, switch page theme. 
is the module. Okay, so do you see how we have RDRC? Okay, so what we need to do is just remove the forward slash between the C and the star on both of those patterns. Yeah, and you can keep the star. We just want the forward slash to disappear. Yep, delete that, and then the same thing for the one above, exactly. And then if you save that, save configuration down there, I think we'll be good to go. Hopefully. We'll take a look. Just make sure that page saves real quick before clicking anything else. Okay, great. And then if you click back to site, um, so now if you go back to the site, Debbie. Oh, okay. Oh, it looks like it's appearing in a other page. Okay, that's cool. That's all right. Okay, so this looks right now, right? So we have the right title, right title, right menu, um, correct page, and then I guess click through some of the, the main navigation links, make sure that those are, are working okay, but I think that's what you wanted. And then are you Okay. Yeah, take a look, make sure it's working in the the other window and No, right. I'm sorry. Um it's projects. Oh, projects. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's so the the subdomain is is projects and then um yeah, so okay. Make sure that looks okay and Yeah, if everything looks good there, I guess uh, just uh, make sure you can click the home page and go back to the the home there, Debbie. Um, yeah, give that a click. Make sure that all works. I think it looks good. Okay, so yeah, so I think that part's all set. Do you do you understand kind of what was going on there again? It was it's similar to some of the other block visibility settings that we've had in the past. Right. So. Um. Well, actually, it depends on the um, it depends on the field. So if we um, I, I can't remember how we set it up. If we set it up with a plain text field, it's not going to support any of the HTML characters. Now, if we had set it up with one of the the full text fields with like the the WYSIWYG, um, then then we actually could add those tags right directly in there, and you can add the EM tag, the emphasis tag, and that will italicize your content. So it depends on how that field is set up, actually. So um, you'd actually, if you if you go in, a quick way you can tell is like on the actual page you're trying to edit. If we if we click edit there, you know we can take a look and see if that supports the tags or not. Go to yeah. So and I don't want you to have to lose your changes. So if you want to open up a new window, like duplicate this tab, um, or or control click on edit. Either way should work. If you hold down control and click edit, yeah, then the tab over to the right just opened up. Um, the tab right to the right, yeah. And okay, so the project name is a plain text field. So that so that one is not going to allow us to add those tags to it. And if if I actually recommend, so if it's a field like this that's structured that um, is always italicized throughout the site, um, I generally would recommend coding that style into something like CSS because if you're rely like so in this case you're doing most of the content editing, so it'd probably be fine, and, and I bet it would be consistent, but. 
if you get to the point where you have other content editors in there, if you're relying on them to know to put the emphasis tags in there, you might end up getting inconsistent styles because some people might add it, some people might forget it, some people might not know how to do it. Um, so you're leaving a lot of things up to chance if, you, if you're if you relying on the content editor to add the HTML tags in. That's why I actually think this way with like a, a unstyled field and then going into the CSS and making sure that every time the project name field shows up, it's italicized, is probably the better way to go for consistency's sake. And so, I mean, we can, oh, let me just go back here. Okay, so that will be italicized. And then pro this uh -huh. and keywords will be bold. Okay. Yep, we can do that. Want to take a look? And, and maybe investigator too. Okay, yeah, we can do that. So we'll, let's start with the first one here. So it looks like you have the the field highlighted over there on the right. All right. That's okay. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so you have the right field highlighted. So I think, you know, the first thing I would do is I try to get the the class name that seems most appropriate here. So it looks like we have a field name, field project. And I assume it says name if you if you actually click into, yeah. Um, yep. So okay, that's what I would grab. I would grab field name, field project name because that's very specific to this exact field that you have here. Um, and I would make sure that I'm copying that that class there, and I would try to target that class in my CSS. Okay. Now, now one one thing I will note is um, Drupal has this concept of of um, field definitions and field instances. And, and what that basically means is you can define a certain type of field, for instance, a project name field, and then you can have many instances across different content types and different, you know, different um, bundles of, 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 of content. So um, if you just target the field name, field project name, there's a chance if you were to reuse this field that you'd be styling the, the field um, in a different place. So what I tend to do is I try to make it a little more specific to what I'm doing. So this is um, an RDRC project content type. So I would, I would tend to make sure that my style is targeting the RDRC um, project content type and then the field within that content type. And that way I know if I reuse the field, I'm not necessarily going to pull in styles that I don't want in a different place, if that makes sense. So one thing I would do is, and, and for now, we can start by copying the field name, field project name. That's, that's a good... Uh, place to start for sure. I'll edit it out. Okay. And then, yeah, go to your CSS. And paste that in there. Okay. Yep, and you can probably delete all the stuff besides the field name, field project name. Field name, field project name. Yep, that's probably all we need there. And then you want to make sure that it starts with a dot because it's a class. So right in the front there, start it with a dot. And now let's go back to your um, browser real quick and I, I think we can make this a little bit more specific. That's what I recommend. So if you if you go up up a little bit on that screen there where you are in the HTML, let's look for something that says something about RDRC project, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Yep, so, so node type RDRC projects. Yeah, I would grab that class too. Was that? I wouldn't have known to do that. Yeah, it takes a little bit yeah, of... I was, I, was, I was grabbing this, and then I didn't know if it was, I was supposed to use the two dashes and... Yep. Was, yeah. yeah, it's a little okay. confusing at first. Um, this stuff will become second nature. To, I remember when I was first looking at this, it was, it was confusing. So, like, CSS, you know, it has a lot of rules of, like, what means that something's nested, what means that something's at the same level, what do you do when you have a class or versus an ID versus an element... And there's a lot of little nuance, and it's it can like if you're not very familiar with it, it can be frustrating because like a small little error can can make it so you're not targeting the right thing. Um, and also just like knowing that like so I know for instance that Drupal typically will give you a class for the content type, and it'll typically give you a class for the the specific field. And I know just from experience that it's helpful. Like if you're just trying to target that specific field on that content type, that those two things should be nested within each other, and that just comes with experience. Um, it, uh, if you spend enough time in here, it'll, be, it'll become second nature to you and you won't really have to think about it, but definitely if you're not used to it, I would understand. I appreciate the conference. Sure. I, I, trust me, Debbie, I was exactly, I was exactly with you. Um, I, I've gone through the same 
process of, of not understanding this stuff and then uh, doing it a couple times and then realizing that, you know, oh, this follows a certain pattern. So you'll, you'll totally pick it up. Um, so in this case, I think the only one we want here is that middle one that says node type RDRC project. So again, let's delete everything there. Yep, delete all that. And then, yeah, delete all that. And then we want to make sure, so the field actually appears within the project. So we want to make sure that the field name field projects actually appears after the node type RDRC projects. So let's, yeah, cut and paste that beforehand. Okay, and then that's a class as well, so we want to make sure that starts with a dot. And then I would just put them on the same line, so I'd actually, um, I would backspace on that second thing and make sure they're on the same line, but just have a space in between them. So, and, and this is a distinction, so as it is, uh, with a dot, keep the dot and have a, a space in between. So, I'll tell you w what this means real quick. So, this is saying, when you have two things like that and you have a space in between, you're saying that the field name, field project name, is nested within the node type RDRC projects. If you had no space there, which seems like a very subtle difference, what you're saying is that there's an element that has both of those classes on the same element. So it's, it's that space is a very important distinction. The space um, represents nesting of elements versus no space means that they're on the same level of an element. Now, if you are missing the dot, what that represents is that's an actual element name. So for instance, there's a body element, there's a div element, there's a span element, an H1 or an A tag. Those are all the actual name of the, the, the actual tag. And then those can have classes. When you have the dot, you're saying this is a class that appears on an element. So for instance, although we have this and this is proper right now, and I think it'll work, you could also name this div dot field name field project name and or div dot node type rdrc projects and that would be the exact same thing it would be a little bit more specific because you're adding an element there but the the, the theory of what it's targeting would be exactly the same because you have a div element with that class attached to it on the same level i know that's a lot and it's hard to kind of wrap your head around when i'm just kind of speaking at you through a screen but I'm sure if we sat down together in, in, in person, we could go through and, and show exactly what those distinctions are with the CSS. Anyways, that's long-winded. Um, I think, you know, so right now, if you just start the opening bracket and then you put an ending bracket, we can actually just write our styles right within there. And um, and then we'll be able to target this and, and make sure that we, we make the, the text emphasized. So if you go back to, yeah, exactly. I think it's font style, I think is what you had written. Okay. Yep, and then if you close your bracket there, now save this file and then, you know, do the whole cache clearing dance. Um, that should appear. Assuming that's specific enough. Yeah, you can almost file, f uh, follow that exact style. You'll you'll nest um, a new field name within the um, the RDRC projects again, and and you'll probably focus on the label exactly. So so within that field, you the new field. This in this case, it's field name, field pro uh, program, and focal dash. <laughs> so you know it, it looks like you know it ran out of space, right? Um, so you're going to grab that new field name, and then you're going to target specifically the field label within there. So there'll be a, another layer of nesting within there. And we can take a look at that. Okay. 
let, let's make sure that our style applied here first though. So, um, you know, you can reload that page or, or whatever you want to do or, or open a new page there and take a look. Yeah. See, that's another advantage of, of kind of doing the local development. This would would be a lot faster for you um, to, to load it. Um, there's a little bit more work that is involved, like setting up all that stuff, but it would make the page loads a lot faster. And if you're, you know, if you're developing on Drupal eight hours a day, um, you know, five days a week, something like that, um, you know, each one of these page loads is taking, what, 10, 10 seconds, 15 seconds sometimes. If you're reloading the page, you know, hundreds of times a day, you're really adding a lot of time to your development cycle. So it might be worth at some point looking into that local development um, setup. Yeah. Yeah, and I try when I upload these videos, I actually try to go through and um, these long page loads, I try to cut them out. Um, manually, so when you watch the video, you're not sitting around waiting for all of them to load every time. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I don't get all of them, but I try to, I try to cut those out um, as much as I can. Okay, so it didn't work because I opened it up in my other browser. Okay. Great. Great. So that looks good. Oh no! Yeah, that worked, right? Yep, that looks that looks italic to me. Okay, so then let's grab the next one. So we want to look the investigator. Do we want that bold, or do you want to just go down to program and focal areas for now? I'm just gonna open up. I'm just gonna open up another um, project page to make sure. Sure. Okay. So okay, number two. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Great. Okay. So we'll, okay. We'll go here. Yeah. So so we're looking at that. Okay. So perfect. So. Do you see um, over here on the right-hand side, you already have it selected, which is good, the field label. If you go right above that, do you see where it says field name, field project, program, and focal? One down from there. I, yeah, exactly. Um, so copy that. And we'll use the same format, actually. So we'll st we're going to start again with the, um, yeah, with the no, yeah, basically that, yeah. So then below here, delete everything besides the field name, field project, and focal. Yeah. That's all you want, exactly. A little farther, a little farther than that. Actually, undo that. You need a little bit more. So anything with before anything that includes is included there before the space. So do you see there's a little bit of a space between focal dash? You actually need that last dash too. That's part of the class name. Um, it's just a we Yep. So so basically I think it ran out of space. Yeah, that whole thing there, exactly. What I think happened is it, it ran out of space. And then, yep, paste it over that. Exactly, paste it right there, perfect. And then, so we're doing something a little different here. So, and if you go back to your browser, I'll show you exactly what's happening here. Yep, so that's, that's correct. Except we have to do one last thing here. So, before we were targeting the whole field, now we only want the field label. So do you see how there's a nested element within there that says label, field, underscore, underscore, label? So you just if you grab that class, field, underscore, underscore, label. Right here? Yep, do you see where the class, uh, do you see where to the right of it, the class? So if you click in between the quotes there after the class, yep, where you are, if you go right to the right, move your mouse to the right a little bit. Yep, right where it says field underscore underscore label. Click that. Yep, right there. And then copy that. And you go to your editor. And then you nest that after the last class you, you pasted. So right after focal dash, do you see where it says? Um, so actually outside of the, yep, yep. Right after focal dash, do a space, a dot, and then paste it. Perfect. So now you're saying, give us the field label within that within that field, um, within that uh, program and focal field. And then if you save this and, and flush your cache and reload, you should see that that becomes bold. Can we do it for the next one too? 
Yeah, for, for sure. Um, Want to see if this one comes through first and see if this one's working, and then we can go from there. Okay. Or I mean, you can go, or feel free to, yeah, feel free to reload the cache, and then we can start working on the next one. And basically, what I would do for this next one is I would copy the same thing that we did above. Start from there, because we're only going to change one one little thing on this. And um, yep, so instead of the, um, yeah, so yeah, click on that. And so do you see um, above where it says uh, field name field P? Yeah, okay. So you're going to grab the field name field P. I'm not sure where that naming convention came from. It might have been just a, a typo or something, but that's the one we want. So let's let's grab field name field P. Yep, copy that. Yep, so you don't need that first field. Do you see how there's a space between field and field, Debbie? Okay. Yeah. So we'll have to get rid of that. But yeah, we just want that. Yeah, exactly. Cut that. And then put that over exactly over that one. And then that last dash, we don't need that either. Perfect. Paste that there. Yep. And then delete that. And then just save that. Yeah, let's take a look and see if that's working for us. Re reload that. Actually, do you know? I, I believe it's font. I think it's font weight bold. Actually, if I now that I'm thinking of this, I'm not sure. I don't think it's font style bold. Okay, yeah, because it didn't work. Yeah, try font weight bold. The same thing for that one down there. And save that. Yep, again, do the do the cache clear and then to reload that, hopefully that will start coming through on that page there. I know this year really flew by. It's a uh, kind of a blur for the most part. It, it does feel cold enough, though. I'll tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> we had a really warm day two days ago, but now it's ready for winter. Which I mean, I I actually love the the different seasons, so I'm not really complaining. I'm I'm excited to do some skiing. Do you ever do you go out and ski at all? Yeah. I tried it. I wasn't very good at it. Yeah. I think because I was older. I think you need to really start skiing at a young age. I think it does Time help. You think? Yeah, I think it does. Well, I know I know some people who've been skiing since they're like five, and they're just like unbelievable. So I think there might be something to it. So okay, that looked like it didn't come through, did it? Um, let's inspect. Yeah. Let's inspect the element over here and see if we can figure out what's going on. Um, so you want to like right click on. Oh, on the page you're on is fine actually, because you you want a page that's reloaded already. So yeah, so right right click on program in focal area. And then we got the label. Okay, so what do we have going on here? Do we see our style showing up first of all? So the first thing I always do is I look and see if we can actually see the style that we applied, and then we can determine if we're first of all if it's not specific enough, that mean that'd be crossed out, or if it's just is incorrect and not doing what we want. But I'm not seeing it over there at all. I'm not seeing our our field label um, uh, font weight bold appearing at all. Are you seeing it anywhere if you scroll down on the the very right hand pane where the styles are? I'm not seeing it. So I think what that means is we might have an incorrect selector here. We might have messed up some of our selectors. So let's take a look. Um, so we have field name, field pro program, and focal. Yep. And then we have a class field label. 
And then can you go up a little bit more? I want to make sure that we have the, the nesting right here. So um, we grabbed the uh, node type RDRC projects from the article. This seems to be nested within that. Okay, interesting. Um, node type RDRC projects and field name, field Okay, that's that's interesting. And, and um, this page has been reloaded, right? Can we just give this a quick refresh, just to make sure that? You know what? Oh, there it is. Do you see? Why, why, why would it... Yeah, I do. Yeah, it must not have been. We have a lot of tabs open. There's a chance that we reloaded a page and then clicked into another page, but that looks like that's what we want. Looks great. Okay. Okay. Very. Right, so here's one other thing. Okay. Um, Yeah. Mhm. Mm and I created it with these pictures. Yeah. The way they, the way they wanted it. Mhm. Mm well, Janet now just decided that she doesn't like the fact that people have to scroll down to see the images. So she wanted to have like one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And then eventually another another image is going to appear on here, which is going to be a graph. And I don't know how the best way. To and actually make these smaller. Mm, okay. So yeah, so, um, well there's a couple things here, so. Um, do we make, should we start a page from scratch in case we don't finish it and you, I can work on it and if they go live they can use this in the meantime? You can do that, that's a good, you know, that's a very smart way to, to think ahead about that, Debbie. That, that's actually something I might do, so I, I might just kind of create a new page and name it like home alternative or something like that for now. Copy everything you have here and build it out like that and then um, basically we can go through and try to style some of this stuff ourselves. So um, when when she so says... Before it's going to edit? Mm -hmm. And then copy? Yeah, I would copy okay. copy what you have there. You might have to re-upload the images just so it can get those references, but it might work like that. So yeah, go in, actually, if you go into edit and you go into source, I think it will work. Yeah, it's very slow. I um, So I've been talking with Tim a little bit about maybe putting together a little more robust of a training plan for you guys. Um, and I like in doing that, we would talk about setting up your local environment and everything. And I think that would be a, a huge game changer for you. It's a lot. It's a little bit more complicated, um, but I think it would save you a ton of time with these slow page loads. Yeah, so if you copy everything in there. And then... Um, Yep, and then, oh, yeah, exactly. Create new content, and we'll add a new RDRC page, and we'll just paste this stuff in there. Yep, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, that's probably smart to leave it unpublished and then, yep, full HTML source, exactly, you know exactly what you're doing. Paste it and then give that a save. Great, look at that. Okay, so yeah, so now, um, 
So yeah, we can work off this. And this is so if you went to like you know the projects URL, you wouldn't be able to see this page because it's unpublished. So it's only available to admins. Um, and then I think the thing to do is so um, you can actually style a lot of this with CSS. So can you cl click into the source here? I just want to see how this is kind of set up right now. It looks like you have each one of these into a, a paragraph. Is that correct? Each one of the people. Okay. Um, so yeah, that will work. There's a couple of. Uh, I'm not sure we'll be able to cover this entirely on the call here, but there's a lot of different ways to do this, and I can maybe help you start get started here. So let's look. Let's let's view the front end of this page and see if we can do some things with the style here. I think ultimately what what might be the best thing to look into is um, a CSS flex box, but I think um, that might be a little more than we're going to cover right now. So maybe I can just show you a little bit about like inline styling and, and getting. Some, some of these to appear next to each other. So do you want to click the view tab at the top there, Debbie? And we'll we'll just like we're gonna write the CSS for this anyway. So um, I, I figure we'll just look at the front end, just like we're editing any other thing, and then um, inspect the element on on Nicole there, and um, we can try to grab her container and make sure that we yeah exactly. And then try to grab the, the, the highest level thing we can have for her. So um, like if you go up to the P there, the, the P tag, if you hover over that on the right-hand side. So, so yeah, go up a little bit right uh, right there, actually, right to the left there. If you go to that P tag, that's her parent. Do you see that? Um, so there's all these P margins. Here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you see when you hover over that one, it, it highlights her. So if you go down one more, uh, a couple more. Do you see how it highlights different sections there? If you go down yeah. one, okay, and then one more. Okay, so those are two different P tags. So we probably want Nicole's image and her and her um, her inf contextual information there that you know her name, her position, and like her education and that kind of stuff. We want that to probably all appear within the same box, right? Because it's going to be easier. You know, those things are associated with each other, right? So we want to have that all clumped together. We don't want them to be disassociated. So one thing I might do is I would edit the, the text there and I would actually wrap all that into a single div and call it like, um, and then give it like a class of like uh, profile or something like that. And I would wrap all the, the corresponding ones in there in a div and call them profile. And that will allow us to, to much more easily go through here and actually like, style these things in some kind of grid fashion. Does that make sense? Yeah, she actually wants the photo not underneath rather than next, you know, before the name. She wants the, the photo before the name. Okay. Well, I think it's still important that we, at the very least, we um, we wrap everything together. So even if the photo is going to appear to the left or the right or in line, um, I still think we want the, the text and the photo clumped together. And whenever you want something like grouped together like that, I think it makes sense to wrap them in some kind of element that, that brings them together, especially when we have control over the, the, the markup so easily right here. So I would click into edit still. Yeah. And I, and I would wrap, I would wrap each one of these people into a single, uh, each one into an individual div element, um, just so they can all group together. Yep, exactly. And then, you know, click on your source. You, yeah, you can close that for now. Source, okay. And then we uh, look for where Nicole's information is there. Is that it right there? Okay, so that's her, okay, so that's her information. And then below the next paragraph tag there is her image, right? That looks like it's got her, um, yeah. okay. So those two things, I would, I would, on the outside of those two elements, I would wrap a div. So I'd create a div, and I would give it a, I would inside there, I'd give it a class actually. So do sp div space class before the the closing tag there, space, yep, class equals double quote, and call it, pro, I would call it profile, I guess, or or whatever you want to call it really, and then close the quotes exactly. And, and then after the, yep, do a closing div, so exactly. And then I would repeat this for each one of those things. So you can copy and paste that first one, div profile. Make sure you get that first opening tag there, Debbie. I think we, we might have dropped that. Yeah. Um, yep. 
and copy that. Yep, copy that one. And then if you go down here, so make sure we close our divs off after. So I think we, um, actually I think we need it. Is that, is that, can you go up a little bit? I can't see if we grab too much there. Can you scroll up a little bit on the screen? Scroll up a little bit more. Can you scroll up a little more? Okay, no, you have it right. Okay, so it looks like we have, we have um, Jeff Brown's profile, then we have his image. Yep, okay, and then do it again. Yep, you have it, that's exactly right. So get the profile information and the image, close the div, and then do the same for the next one. Profile, then group, yeah, group that together. That's the next one, you got the, the profile information, then the image, then we'll do it again for the next. Close it off. And again. And then close it off. And then one last thing I might do after this is I would take, oops. Now I would take all the pro, so we just created a bunch of profile blocks, right? And now I would take all those profile blocks and I would wrap them into something like called like all profile or, or profiles actually. So if you go um, actually right here at the end, close another div off at the end here because we're going to open one at the very top. So do one more closing div there. Another yeah, exactly. And now if you scroll up to the top where that first uh, Nicole's first profile is. So do you see? Yeah, right there at the top, uh, right exactly right before her profile so like in between that paragraph tag and that div tag um, so if you go up one line Debbie to the end of that yep and press enter there and then make a new div and you can give this one an ID because there's only gonna be one on here you can do ID equals profiles with quotes, inside quotes. And obviously, I mean, there might be better names, like RDRC profiles or whatever might be more specific. For this case, I think it's fine. So basically what we've done here is we created a, a parent called profiles, and within there we have a bunch of profile, uh, individual profiles that appear. So, you know, Nicole and Jeff and everybody else appears as an individual profile. So now what's this, what's this, going, to, this is going to allow us to do is basically come in here and and target these individual elements that we created and we can create you know different grid dis displays and different things like that with these um, with this HTML that we just created so let's go ahead and save this and let's look at it on the front end again and we'll, we'll inspect the element and see what's going on there um, and just unfortunately I, I do have to hop off here in a minute Debbie um, so I, I'm not sure we're going to finish this, but I'm hopefully I can get you started a little bit. You can look into some of this stuff. I'm going to send you, um, or at least tell you to look up uh, the, the CSS flex boxes. But for now, I just want to look at like like either doing a, a floating on these or, or an inline style on these. So let's let's go up and let's in, inspect the element on this, and I'll show you a little bit what this might look like. But obviously, we might need to look at this again at, at some point together. Yep. So just like that. Okay. So now you can see. Ideally, okay, so you see how we have profiles up there, and if you actually go up to where it says profiles, and let's let's collapse this thing that says profile. Yeah, so, so click the little arrow to the very left of that just to collapse everything inside there. We're not going to worry about that right now. So, yep, click that. So do you see how it's basically a, a profiles parent with a bunch of individual profile um, elements within there? And if, if you scroll over any of those, you can see that it'll highlight each one of those individually, right? Yep, exactly. And then, yeah. so... So basically, we're not going to worry about, right now, we're not worrying about the image appearing to the left to the to right. We're going to keep it as it is. We can fix that later. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that these individual profiles appear in some kind of grid fashion. So one thing we can do is, um, if you want a really easy way, that, uh, and this will make things look a little weird probably, but um, on each one of these profile classes, so if you, the one you're clicked on right now, inside the inline style um, on the right-hand side, do you see that? Like where the CSS is written on the right hand side there, Debbie? Oop, make sure you're, you have that click, that profile. Yep. On the inline style at the very top there, oh, very top. If you click in there, inside there, you can write style just for this individual one. Just say float.
colon. Yep, left. And press enter. Okay. And then um, you can see how Jeff starts floating up left. So, so click the next one there, the, the next profile down below there. And then give him a float left too. You can start seeing that this stuff starts appearing. Um, yep. And enter. Oh, that looks a little. Okay, so now um, what, you, what you want to do is actually, like, do you see where the, the, the HTML window is? Gra grab that and drag it way to the right so you can see what this would look like on a bigger screen here. Yeah. Yeah, drag it way to the right just so we can see what it would look like with a bigger. So you can see that this is starting to, and if you scroll up here, it's starting to kind of give you like a grid-like layout. There's obviously a little, a lot of weirdness going on with that display. We probably would, wouldn't want to specifically use something like the float. That's a kind of like a, a quick and easy way to demonstrate this just because I, I do have to hop off. Um, another way you could do this is with um, uh, inline style. So right now these are block style. They try to take up the whole thing. So you can do... Um, you can do display inline or inline block, and that would give you a similar idea. Because um, right now divs are are by default block based, and they're going to try to take up the whole space they are given. Versus an inline block is only going to take up the space of the the child elements within it. So um, you can play around with a couple of these different displays, but I think ultimately what we're going to want to do is use a CSS flex box, and that's a little more complicated yeah, than. Have... Sorry, what's that? Yep, so we're going to write those styles in there exactly. So right now, you know, you could go through and you could add those float lefts in there, but um, obviously they have a little bit of, you, know, you can tell like on different screen sizes they're, they're, they have some issues, but you could go ahead and you could do some of that if you wanted to. Um, or you could try some inline styles and give them like a percentage width or, or um, I mean, you could even do a div and give it percentage widths, or you can do some inline styles. There's a lot of different ways to accomplish this. I think um, since I have to hop off now, I think a, a good bit of homework might be to just like quickly open up a new tab in your browser and then Google CSS flex box exactly so first one there enter and um, just look up some of like CSS tricks.com that second one there might be a good one um, click on that and and start looking through some of these tut tutorials about how to, to uh, organize elements like this um, and then, so do you see where they're saying container? If you look down below there, so they have like container. So our container is pro it's that ID profiles. And then our children are profile, just, just FYI, because they're going to have a slightly different naming convention than what we used. And also keep in mind, we used an ID for the container. So instead of a dot, which is for classes, we're going to use the hashtag for an ID. And then I would just basically... Go through this, Debbie. It's, it's going to take you a little time, but I think the investment in the learning is going to be worth it. So don't be frustrated if this takes you more than like, you know, a couple of minutes to get. This is going to be a little bit of a learning experience. But I would look through here and try to just like get your head wrapped around the idea of a flex box and how it works. Um, and then try writing some of your own styles using the um, profiles uh, ID and the profile uh, classes and see if you can get something that kind of has that grid shape to it. Um, versus what we're doing now, which is just kind of like a, a bunch of rows with, with information. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Yeah, it's a lot. I, well, I, it's, it's totally okay if we come back and we look at this together and get it working. But I think for now, you know, you have the homepage, uh, you know, working and then you have the separate homepage to play around with. Um, yeah. And then... Basically, I would just come in, I would, I would use it as a learning experience and, and try to, you know, get your head wrapped around some of this stuff and play around with different um, ways to, to set up some of the grid stuff. And there's a bunch of resources online that, that can help you get started. Um, and then, you know, if if you hit any roadblocks or having trouble understanding it, we'll, we'll come back in on our call. Uh, we'll schedule a call for next week and um, do the same thing and, and we'll go over some of this and try to get it working that way. Does that seem like a good plan? Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Debbie. Um, and again, I know you, I'm, I've been recording this, so I'm going to try to get some more of these videos up. I, I know I'm way behind on those, but um, oh, I'm, I, I, you're so good. I totally understand. Yeah. I, I appreciate everything. Sure. All right. Sounds good, Debbie. Uh, I'll, I'll send up something probably around this time again next week, if that works for you, and I'll put it on the calendar and send you an invite. That sounds awesome. Cool. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the week and weekend. All right.
All right, you too. Take care. Bye. Bye.